Hey guys, it's Matt from Coffee Break Tennis. And If I was really good at guitar solos, that's where I would do the solo. But I'm not. And Peter, you I mean, I don't need to introduce Peter to you most likely, but we're excited to tell you about Tennis Con. Number five. Number five. Is finally here. That's right. We're going back to the ranch. And right now we've got a great lesson with Will Hamilton, who's back yeah. on his YouTube channel. Yeah, Will Will's going to be part of Tennis Con 5. And uh, so enjoy this video. And at the end, we're going to show you how you can get on the Tennis Con alert list and get 30 of the best videos in the history of Tennis Con. You don't want to miss your chance to get your free golden ticket for Tennis Con number five. See you after the video. Hey everybody, Will Hamilton here, and welcome to this yet to be named show. More on that at the end of this episode. But today we're gonna to be talking about how Novak Djokovic, seen here at a bakery that is out of gluten-free bread, how Djokovic was able to use his forehand to beat Rafael Nadal at the French Open. Rafa, of course, is the king of clay, and what t-shirt contests. And as always, this episode is brought to you by the Fuzzy Yellow Balls app. If you like risky clicks from a work computer, then you're gonna love the Fuzzy Yellow Balls app. So the first thing Djokovic did was a little bit counterintuitive. Here we have Djokovic in the far court. He's winding up to hit a forehand and he's gonna attack Rafa's backhand. Now, the typical advice is to hit your forehand deep like this which is a perfectly good strategy. It's safe, it's reliable, it's the Toyota Prius of forehands. But what Djokovic does instead is he hits a sharp angle that pulls Rafa off the court and forces him to go to the slice. So this ball was a sharp angle that landed about here. It landed short and that gave the ball time to tail away to pull Rafa off the court and from here, Rafa doesn't have any good options. He goes to the drop shot, and Djokovic easily gets to that ball and puts it away. Here we have virtually the identical situation. Djokovic pulls Rafa off the court. Rafa now tries to slice down the line. And then two shots later, Djokovic rips a forehand winner. And then he celebrates with a couple shoulder rolls, although in France, they're called shoulder baguettes. So the sharp angle forehand, great shot because it gets your opponent off the court. It gets a weak reply, and that allows you to take control of the point. And another way to think of this is simply as a passing shot. So this is going to be too soon for all you Fed fans out there, but let's go back to Federer's second championship point against Djokovic from Wimbledon a few years back. So Federer serving to Djokovic, Djokovic hits a return, Fed approaches, and Djokovic hits a sharp angle passing shot to win the point. So this is the exact same shot we just saw him use against Rafa. The only difference is Federer is now at the net. It is just a sharp angle passing shot. And the key here that I, I, I want to make sure I emphasize this is with a baseline opponent, one of the reasons you want to land it short here is because not only does that get the ball further off the court, it gives it time to tail away, you get that angle, but the ball also drops. And so when your baseline opponent runs over to get this thing, by the time they get there, the ball is going to be low. That prevents them from taking a big cut at the ball. So the shot you get back is going to be an easy ball that you can really step in and rip. Now, when we look at where this ball lands, it's a pretty small target. It basically lands right at the single sideline. And I would not recommend you aim for such a small target. Uh, first of all, Statistically speaking, you are probably not Novak Djokovic, which means you don't have the precision of someone who sleeps in a hyperbaric chamber. But second of all, if you play in a USTA league or if you play in the juniors, that ball is definitely getting called out. Wait, you thought that ball was in? Dude, I saw it clearly. It was way out. There's no one over there. So what I would recommend instead is just aiming for a much more conservative target, basically just smack dab in the middle of the service box here. That's going to give the ball plenty of time to still tail away from your opponent. You're probably not playing somebody who moves as well as Rafa. 
and it's just giving you a lot of margin to kind of guarantee that you're not going to make an error when you go for this shot. So the second thing Djokovic did is something called a big shot at a big target. Now, most opponents are obviously going to expect that you're going to attack their weakness, typically the backhand. And Djokovic is set up right now like he's going to hit that sharp angle passing shot he's been using all match. And you can see Rafa is kind of leaning towards that shot a little bit. So what Djokovic does instead is he attacks the forehand with something called a big shot at a big target. And you can see that's what he does right here. And what this shot is, is exactly what it sounds like. It's a big shot at a big target. He's aiming for a big target right here. There's no precision involved. You do not need to sleep in a hyperbaric chamber. You're just hitting it really hard at a big target at your opponent's strength, probably the forehand. And what that does is it simply gets your opponent off balance. It pushes them back. You can see Rafa's basically hitting that forehand from Belgium. And it gives Djokovic a weak reply that he can then step in. And in this case, he hits a drop shot. Here we have a similar situation. Big shot at a big target. Djokovic follows up with a cross-court drop shot. And no one's going to run that down. Not even Forrest Gump. So these two forehands, the passing shot to attack the weakness and the big shot at the big target to attack the strength, are why Djokovic was able to beat Rafa at the French Open. And these two forehands are definitely ones that you want to add to your game. Now, one more thing we can learn from Djokovic is the sorry, not sorry head shake as you walk up to shake hands. Here we can see it. It's very, very subtle. He does it right there. We're going to have to play it in slow motion. It happens so fast. And here it is, very subtle, right there, that little quick head nod there. It's a great way to pretend that you care about your opponent's feelings, even though you obviously could care less. Then they bring it in for the handshake. Not sure about Rafa's hand position right here especially when there's all this real estate to work with. And then finally, we've got Djokovic celebrating with, uh, with what sort of looks like the first part of the YMCA dance. I would recommend learning the whole thing. Also comes in handy at weddings. But like I said at the top, I still don't have a name for this show. So if you have a suggestion, please leave it in the comments below. And just want to say thanks for watching this video. Hope you found it entertaining. Hope it helped you with your game. And I'll see you guys in the next one. <laughs> all right guys so hopefully you enjoyed that video make sure to subscribe to their channel follow them on all the social media make sure to subscribe to matt at coffee break tennis on the youtubes on the, the YouTubes. best of all the social medias that's right and uh what we want you to do right now is get on our tennis con 5 alert list free tickets are not ready yet but if you get in their alert list we'll notify you when they are plus what else can they get matt there's also the top 30 lessons from all of tennis con history so make sure you pop in your email below this is year number five so there's a lot of history in the top 30 uh they're gonna be pretty good yeah so we want to do something special this year give you those 30 you get free 48 hour access to to all the videos and uh we'll see you guys on the next video